straight into my Photos app. So the Photos app is arranged by years and collections. So notice this tells me when what the years are from each photo, and it also tells me where the photo was taken. So notice it says District 3 Hagerstown. If I choose that, it's going to pull up on a map, and I can see where that was taken. That is something that you can change in the settings if you don't want it to actually show the geographic location of the photo. But you'll see that it has the year. So if, if a student actually pulls a photo offline and it has a timestamp, let's say that it was from 2005, you would see a photo from 2005. That doesn't mean it was taken then with the iPad. That just means that's the timestamp on the photo. So let's say that I wanted to go to this picture. I have several options here based on the grouping. I can go to share and I can share the moment, meaning the entire group that's in that moment, or I can choose an individual photo. Now from the top, moving to the right, I can hit the heart, which is a favorite. Any photo that I favorite is going to go into the favorites folder. So if I'm working with students and they take a photo and they're going to use it in iMovie multiple times, they may want a favorite because in iMovie there's a favorites folder that will pull any photo or video that I have favorited into that one location. Beside that is the share sheet, in the share sheet, you'll actually be able to airdrop if you want to send an airdrop. You could send mail so they could email you the photo. They could add it to notes. They could add it to uh, PDF to iBook so it can convert it. The other thing you can do on the bottom, you notice, is assign to a contact. Um, and there are some several other options. If you're using different apps, some of those apps will show up. Uh, and there are some out there that use this that I don't have downloaded on my iPad, so it's not an option. But if you do want to have those, they will show up here. Anything that you give access to the photos to will be able to show up there. The other thing I can do is delete, so it will give you your trash can. So if I wanted to delete this photo, I'm going to delete, and it is going to be gone. Now, it actually doesn't completely leave from here. It goes into the recently deleted folder, which we will look at. Finally, I have a lot of editing options on the Photos app that you can go through. You can crop from here. You can change the uh, filter on the photo. You can change the contrast. But the nice thing is, let's say that I went in here and I wanted to go to be tonal. I hit Done. It will save the photo. But if I go in to edit this again, in the upper right, there's a Revert button. So I can revert it back to the original, and it will show me the original photo that I had. So that's a nice feature. Also on the bottom are your albums. So it will show you your camera roll, selfies, so it detects any time you're trying to take a selfie of just your face and you're using the FaceTime camera, panoramas, videos, time-lapse screenshots. It breaks down each type, but the recently deleted is going to hold any photo you've deleted for a 30-day period. After that, it will be permanently deleted, but let's say that I, I have a student who has a bunch of different photos and videos and I want to have space. Once I delete them, they go here. From here, I need to then delete them again so they're completely off of my iPad. So I would do select, I would do delete all, and at that point, they will be completely deleted. Thank you for watching the second part of the iPad Photos and Camera module. Please check out our other modules on the WCPS Professional Learning site.